Welcome to our lecture on DC microgrid and the control system. Today we are going to discuss about the microgrid controls architecture that is one of the important aspect of our microgrid. So, our presentation layout will be the microgrid control issues, thereafter microgrid control methods, active and the reactive power flow control, VYF control and the troop control and thereafter power management. So, this is a uh, troop control can be SC and DC and voltage and frequency control of course, it is required to the AC microgrid. So, most important features that distinguish a microgrid from a conventional distribution system is that it is controllability. The purpose of which is to make microgrid behaves as a controllable coordinated module when connected to the upstream network. The function of the microgrid control can be divided into the three parts. The upstream network interface we shall discuss in detail in next slides, microgrid control and the protections and the local control. The upstream network interface decides whether the microgrid is able to operate in grid connected or the eye landing mode. So, many uh, solar inverters generally does not able to uh, in India if it is connected to the grid and generally dispatch power to the grid. If sudden region power goes off then it has to stop. So, it cannot feed the local power. So, it is one of the capability that microgrid should have if the it is aligning mode it should able to feed the local load. So, thus it makes decisions for market participations whether it will sell the power to the main grid and coordination with the upstream network that is actually the how it will sell, what is the power quality, all those issues. Microgrid control include voltage and the frequency regulation. Of course, you cannot send, if you are willing to sell power, you are not allowed to sell power at different voltage and the frequencies. So, it has to be with your grid frequency as well as grid uh, as well as in a desired power factor. You cannot inject power factor at any power at any power factor. So, for this reason you require to have a real and the reactive power control and also we require to have a load forecasting. So, you know that where the peak will come in load and if required load scheduling that means, some can you shift the some amount of load where your power is more where actually you have excess generations and microgrid monitoring and the so thereafter we require to monitor it properly whether physically as well as sensors levels and thereafter its protections fault and different kind of aspects. Now, local control and protection level encompasses primarily voltage and the frequency regulations, primary real and the reactive power control for each local generation and energy storage unit. To a large extent the control microgrid uh, real uh, release the information on the communication technology because it has to communicate between two different sources as well as the load they might be a miles apart if it is not uh, uh, if it is they might be actually some kilometers apart if it is not hundred thousand miles apart. So, for this reason we require to have different kind of communication networks Zigbee or whatever may be. The modern microprocessors are utilized extensively within microgrid providing the ability to develop sophisticated inverter and the load controller or other active component within microgrids. 
And interesting characteristics of microprocessor is that they provide adequate processing power, communication capabilities and sophisticated software middleware at the low prices. So that is something it has been achieved you can say and thus the scope of this micro gate has en enhanced. Now the control issues of the micro grids. It is obvious that active control of micro grid will be based on the existing communication inter interface or the infrastructures in order to the reduce the cost. Already if you have a SCADA, you will be using SCADA. If you have already have a Zigbee, you will be using Zigbee. Microgrid can either operate in centralized control mode or decentralized control mode. In centralized mode, the microgrid control plays the most important role in optimizing microgrid. The, in decentralized mode, the primary goal is to maximize the power production to meet the load demand and export the excess electricity to the grid. So, you will sell the power when you have a excess. In a microgrid, different kind of control methods are applied to ensure reliable operation in both grid connected mode and islanded mode. Depending on the distributed generations, the operating condition there are mainly three types of control. One that is active at the reactive power flow control that is PQ control, thereafter voltage frequency control and the droop control. Droop control can be both AC as well as DC. So, let us see first the active and the reactive power flow control. So, you have the P reference we, which we have seen the our 20th, 19th lectures, how we generate the P reference and you have an actual power generation and you feed it to the PI controller, ultimately you generate this actually D axis reference of the current and then you subtract with the actual D axis current of the maybe the inverter. Then you feed it to the PI controller and ultimately you got the VD1. And that VD1 has to be subtracted from the input U and thus you got the reference VD. You can convert into DQ to UVW or ABC frame of reference. Generally, Germans write UVW and we may write ABC also, same thing. And same way for the reactive power flow control U for mainly SAC control. QDF and you got a PI controller that will be the outer loop, then you got IQDF, then you multiply with ID with the omega and that will be substituted by the PQ1 and that value you require to put it, there is a cost reference, it is omega into ILQ has to be subtracted and that value will be VD and ultimately you get because you want that it will be a unity power factor then you will have you will be the RMS value and this value will be essentially the different three voltages ABC and that is actual voltages and thereafter what happen you will feed it to the filters and thus you got a filter current that will be in ABC or the UVW frame and you transfer to this. Uh, just difference that is really actually UVW to the DQ frame and you get the IDIQ. The main objective of PQ control is to keep the micro source active power and the reactive power constant when the frequency and the voltage deviation stay within the prescribed limit. So, that is a great code. So, you have to follow the great code. The PQ control, the active and the reactive power are firstly decoupled into the DQ axis. 
in order to achieve the independent control. But there is a cross term that is omega into ILQ and omega into ILD. The reactive power control aims, sorry, first let us take active power control. Active power controls aims to maintain the active power output constant at a given reference value within the permissible frequency range. And it has been shown this part of the figure. Figure shows the peak Q control. The active power control aim to maintain the active power output constant at a given reference with a permissible frequency range as I had told you. And the reactive power control aims to maintain the reactive power output constant at a given reference value within the permissible voltage range. And generally it controls also the SAGs. The microgrid operates in the micro grid connected uh, grid connected mode the main power the main power grid is responsible to maintain the voltage and the frequency so it is the job of the this is a rigid system that is a grid will maintain the voltage and frequency and we require to just follow it so pq control is based on the grid voltage oriented pq decoupled control strategy in which outer loop adopts the power control and inner loop adopts the current control. Please go back and see that how does it work. So, here you have output current mode for the inverter, here the dual loop for the inverter. The inverter control wave can be obtained by the reverse spark transformations of the D and Q axis voltage and then the three phase voltage output of the inverter can be derived by the sinusoidal pulse width modulations or any other uh, technique. Uh, so, that is the choice of the particular design engineer. The main objective of VYF control, now let us talk about the VYF control, we have discussed about the PQ control, now we will talk about the voltage frequency control is to maintain the system frequency and the magnitude constant regardless of the actual reactive power, real and the reactive power output of the microsources. So, you require to maintain this thing constant. A frequency control adjusts the reactive power output to maintain the frequency at the given reference value. A voltage control adjusts the reactive power output to maintain the voltage at the given reference value. So, see that how does it work? You got U1 DD. So, you got a PI controller that is a reference and you got actual U1 DD. There is subtract that you got a value and then you will subtract it from this I1 ND and thus you got a D axis current. And similarly for the Q axis current, so you will multiply with uh, omega CF and will subtract and here you will multiply with omega CF and will subtract and thus you get the IQ. So, this is the actual value of ID and IQ and that will be multiplied with the voltages and ultimately you will have a UT star and EQ star. So, VYF control is a common when it operates in a islanding mode. So, you have disconnected your connections from the grid. The figure 2 shows the schematic diagram of VYF control or UYF control where the outer loop controls the inner current loop are adopted with the reference signal UILD and the U star LD are the measured voltage and these terms are the actual voltages. So, this is the schematics for the 
u by f control or the v by f control for microgrids and generally it is preferred in islanding mode. In u by f control or the v by f control the inverter output inverter output constant voltage and constant frequency that will ensure continual operations of the slab DGs and sensitive loads after micro grids are been isolated from the grid. So, that is something we require to issue, but what happen if you control the V by F then what happen essentially the flux become constant it is the integration of the frequency. So, if you ensure that then all the machines and all those elements will operate fine otherwise his torque will change and all those things will be a big issue. In this control mode the AC side voltage is regulated according to the feedback from the inverter to maintain the constant output and the dual loop control scheme with the outer loop voltage and control and inner current loop control is often adopted. So, this is the inner current loop control and this is outer voltage loop control and the outer voltage loop control can maintain the stable voltage output and the inner current loop control constitute the current servo mechanism and can significantly accelerate the dynamic response to defend the disturbances if you have a, all of a sudden there is a notches sacks. So, this faster current loop will act and mitigate those disturbances. The dual loop control can make the best use of the system status informations and has dynamic performance in the steady state with a quite good amount of precision. So, it will ensure that again it reaches the stable state after the disturbance is over into the same state where it was with a quite high level of precision that is the advantage of the dual control. Inner control inner loop control current increases the bandwidth of the inverter control system since the switching frequency will be high for this reason you know you require to have a quite high bandwidth and thereby speeding up the dynamic response. So, it can take a very fast actions if it is operating at 10 kilohertz then you have bandwidth of the 10 kilohertz and while your power supply has a supply frequency of the 50 hertz. So, it can act and is thousand times faster of the inverter enhances the inverter's capability to nonlinear load disturbance and reducing harmonic distortion of the output voltage and other power quality issues. It can go for the selective harmonic eliminations and other. So, V by F or U by F control is similar to the PQ control in terms of the decoupling because you have split in DQ frame and what generally it is applied for the islanding mode, where is a PQ control is been applied for the grid connecting mode. Now, another is the troop control and it is basically the first part will be the active power control. In a microgrid the load keeps changing all the time. So, load is something the prerogative of the users, users can change the load as they require. So, generator will change their power output based on the frequency deviation. So, once load is more you will see that there is a deviations in the frequency and based on that they have to increase the power. The relations between between the active power output and the frequency can be described by the following equations in the figure 3. This is the <coughs> frequency in y axis and this is the P1 and this is a P2. You can see that del P equal to P2 minus P1 that is equal to SP is a function into F1 minus F2, where del P is the power output change of the generator and where 
S p is the reciprocal of the slope curve of kilowatt per hertz or it depends on the inertia or megawatt per hertz which is determined the characteristics of the generator, how it will droop if you load it how it is actually the power will come down. So, and no load it will generate this much of frequency once you have loaded to the P1 it will generate a 50 hertz, if you go to the P2 it will generate 49.5 hertz something like that it will continue. Same strategy can be applied for the voltage control, mainly this has been used uh, for the DC microwave. The linear relationship between the reactive power and the terminal voltage shown in figure 4. So, you can see that Q will negative Q also try to increase the voltage similar to that of the active power with the frequency. So, thus voltage can be maintained by actively control the VQ but then you will sacrifice the power quality that is for power uh, the you will have a problem little bit with your power factor. The system voltage control can be carried out by adjusting the reactive power of reactive power output micro sources. So, this is the reactive power it is minus and thus you can have this when you are 0 reactive power this will be the terminal voltage and it is a lagging reactive power and once you load it voltage will come down and again if you can inject minus VQ then you can also swell up the voltage that is also possible. So, the microgrid operation is quite different from the standard power distribution system due to presence of the small scales renewable power generation that is one of the basic understandable loads are not features only they are source also. Critical and the controllable loads distributed energy storage and the so on there are many variant many entities. So, power management approach should be aware of these differences which include these are the following the steady state and the dynamic features of the distributed energy resources these are the energy storage and the distributed generators especially those coupled via electronic interface power electronic interfaces intermittence from primary sources, planning and management of the energy storage units, micro grid current status that mean the grid connected or islanded operations, the quality of power and presence of high priority loads that demands pre that represents the preferential service that can be a critical load or any other entities. So, these are the few aspects you know we require to consider for the power management. For example, if it is an hospital operation theater will be considered the critical load you cannot have a load shedding there. So, based on that you have a different kind of consideration while go for the power management. So, as microgrid designed to be an autonomous system the operation is supported by the power energy management system and some smart features are expected to be present that is the active load control mainly. They power and the energy management system is responsible for managing different DER that is distributed energy resources, energy sources and the storage element called DES are connected to the grid. Accessing and monitoring uh, micro grid frequencies and nodal voltages 
as far as other power qualities indices THD power factor these are the entities that has to be monitored and maintained. Planning and operation of the microgrid in standalone when actually it is cut off from the grid and the emergency condition you may have a cut up due to some issues like thunderstorm your grid connection is off you can still can feed the your uh, critical load. Planning and operating micro grid in standalone in the emergency condition. Deciding the moment to connect and discarding micro grid when you find that there is a excess of power you should be able to connect it when you have when you can self sufficient no point of connecting the gate you can run it in offline mode. and micro grid from the main grid considering operation optimization by internal and the external data that is something also very important. So, we have to see that how much generation is there and external data may be what is the tariff that this power company utility company is giving to you. So, we have to consider the operation optimization based on internal and external data internal load internal generations there are external tariff and all those consideration will come into the picture while forecasting. Improving dynamic response because you have a fast acting power electronics devices, maintaining stability and the nominal values for state variables. So, that is something you should consider in a power management as current there is a many uh, these state variables generally are the current through the inductor that is which I have said. So, voltage across the capacitor that should be really available for the control. These are the few topic uh, uh, few issues to be considered and you know what actually we require to revisit is that this there are three aspects while our control this is for the u by f control or the v by f control mainly it is used in islanding mode you have a pq control mainly it is used in a grid connected mode these are mainly the choice another topic is the uh, dupe control where you have a real power control and thus you control over the frequency and you have a reactive power control thus you have a control over the output voltage sometime and you can see that how reactive power changes the uh, output voltage and accordingly you can change the injecting the reactive power and change the reactive voltages and thereafter based on this three control strategy you have to design your power management control accordingly. So, this is the something we require to keep in mind we will apply PQ control you may apply <coughs> VYF control you may apply group control and these are all for the hybrid micro gate or SCDC micro gate and generally group control alone can be applicable where voltage for the, the DC voltages in case of the DC micro grid. Thank you for your attention we shall continue to our uh, discussions on the DC micro